In this lesson, we're going to take a look at three very important statistical functions, mean, median, and mode. Now, these are very simple functions to use, but it's important to understand how they work and also the difference between them. So let's take a quick look at the data set. Now, what I have here is a list of results from the five kilometer park run that occurred at the weekend. You can see a list of all of the participants, their bib number, their age, and also the time that they achieved for five kilometers. And at the bottom here, I want to work out what the mean, median, and mode is for both the age and the time. Now, what is the difference between all three of these functions? Well, let's start with the top two, first of all, mean and median. Now, mean is just another way of saying average. And if you're familiar with Excel functions, and you should be by now, you'll know that we have a function called average. And what an average does effectively is it adds up the list of numbers and then divides them by the count. So if we have 10, 10, 10, and we want to find the average, the average function will add these together, which would give us 30, and then it would divide it by three, which gives us 10. So the average would be 10. So that is the same as mean. So if you see mean anywhere, it's just looking for an average calculation. So we can do this very simply down here. We're just going to select average. We're gonna select our numbers, close the bracket, hit enter, and then we can drag that formula across to get an average of the time. Now, the time looks a little bit different here, and that's just related to the formatting I have applied to the cell. So I want to open up my formatting, and I'm just going to make sure that I have the same formatting applied. And I think I have this one here. Yes, so hours, minutes, seconds. Let's click on OK. So I can see that the average age is 37.84. Now, in general, you wouldn't have it in that much of an increment, so I'm just going to take those decimal places down which will round that up, the average age of participants in this five kilometer race is 38 years old. And the average time that they took to complete this race is 28 minutes, 16 seconds. So that is our mean. Now, what do we mean by median? Well, median is slightly different because median will just simply tell you what the middle value is from a range of cells. And a lot of the time, whilst it will normally be fairly similar to the average, it can differ very slightly. Now for this one, we have an actual function called median. So let's select it. You can see here it says returns the median or the number in the middle of a set of given numbers. So we just need to select our numbers. So again, we're gonna select for the age, close the bracket, hit enter, and you can see the median, if we take the decimal places down, is 36. So the middle value is different to the average value of this range of cells. Let's copy this across. And again, it's giving me zero. That's just the formatting that I've got applied. This time, just to make things really nice and quick, I'm just going to copy the formatting using Format Painter. So let's click it once and let's apply it to this cell. And you can see again, there is a very slight difference here of 16 seconds. So that's the difference between your average or your mean and median. Now, mode is slightly different. What mode will tell you is which value is repeated most often in a range of cells. So if we type in equals and go to mode, notice that we have mode.mult and mode.sngl. Now, the difference between these two is that mode.mult will effectively return a vertical array of the most frequently occurring or repetitive values in an array or range of data. So it will effectively spill the results if there are more than one. Because it might be that you have, in this example, three people who are age 34 and three people who are age 40. So if both of those occur more than any other values in the list, we want to be able to list them out. And that is where we would use mode.mult. And I'll show you an example of that in a moment. For this one, we're just going to do mode.sngl. And this will just return the most frequently occurring or repetitive value in an array or range of data. So this is only going to show you one value. So let's double click it. Let's select our range, close the bracket, hit enter, and you can see here that the most frequently occurring age in this range is 35 years. Now if I just select this list, and I'm just gonna go up to conditional formatting and say highlight cell rules, 
that are equal to 35, just so we can see. So 35 occurs twice in this list. So we don't have any other numbers that occur three times, four times, twice is the maximum. But check out what we have in here. If we take a look down, you might notice that we have two people who are 48. We also have two people who are 50 in this list as well. So all of these occur twice, but because we've used mult.single and it can only output a single result, it's basically going to give you the first one that it finds. So it starts at the top of the list, it searches down, it gets to 35, that's the result that we're getting. Now let's copy this across. Once again, I'm going to copy the formatting to the cell using the format painter. And we can see here that the time 20.05 is the one that occurs most frequently. And I can see, yes, there is a time of 20.05 and there is another one. And because these are times, it's quite rare for people to get exactly the same time. So two is the highest amount of times this value occurs. So with all that said, let's just finish up by taking a look at that mode.mult. So we're going to go into mode and we're going to choose dot mult this time. Once again, let's use the ages. I'm going to select this list, close the bracket, hit enter. And can you see we get a spill effect here? So this is listing out all of the ages that occur twice. So we have 35, 44, 48, 50 and 32. So that is the difference between mode.mult and mode single. But that's pretty much it. These are very straightforward formulas. Of course, we can combine them with other formulas to make them more powerful, but that's the premise of how they work. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.